Hey, what's up, everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And today what we're going to do and uh, for this tutorial and also for the next couple tutorials is we're going to uh, try to make some improvements and optimizations for our gain slider. Okay, now um, I'm going to break this down into a couple different videos. The uh, reason being is that uh, some of these kind of break down into deeper issues that I think we should just take separate videos for, uh, such as this one, where uh, what we're going to do is take our raw amplitude that is between um, 0 and 1, uh, like like we did the last tutorial, and we're going to convert it into logarithmic uh, decibel scale. Okay, um, so as you as you probably remember from our last tutorial, when we were moving our our volumes our, our volume slider uh, along that last twenty five percent, we weren't really getting much of a fluctuation in our volume, and um, the reason for that is that as humans we hear volume logarithmically rather than linearly, which means that as volume gets louder, we hear differences in volume less. Okay. So we can tell differences. So if something is, let's say, I'm going to, I'm going to say 10 decibels. I say decibels in quotes because decibel isn't really, um, a volume of measurement. It's a, it's, it's a comparison of two measurements, but we won't get into that. But let's say, let's say we had two volumes that were uh, really low and they had a 10 decibel difference. Okay. We would hear the difference between those two volumes um, greater than if we had two massively loud volumes that were 10 decibels apart. We probably wouldn't hear uh, much of a difference in their amplitude or, or volume. Okay. So I hope, uh, so, so what we need to do is we need to make this slider more useful where we're, we're basically hearing what we perceive to be a linear change in, um, in volume uh, along the slider, um, but is in fact a logarithmic change. So it's kind of a, um, it's, it's a uh, illusion, so to speak. So, uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this using an equation. Now, um, one reason that I've decided to separate this out into another tutorial is because uh, we get into this question of the implementation of mathematical equations in our code, which is a very big uh, thing that I, I know I struggle with it. And, um, you know, I, I'm sure that some of you struggle with it, you know, taking um, these equations that we find in um, books and in on websites and really trying to adapt, take them and adapt them to code. But I'm hoping that uh, as we kind of journey along, we can both get better with um, uh, implementing these into our code. So, um, so we can kind of grow together. Okay. So, uh, so this first, so this first equation is something that I got from a, uh, a book and the book was recommended to me. Uh, I actually touched on it in, um, in my recommended books tutorial on, um, on books that I recommend for DSP processing, so on and so forth. Um, but, uh, this guy, uh, Open Framework Sound, and his page is excellent. Uh, if, if you haven't checked it out, go check his page out. Uh, he has a lot of great tutorials, and I've learned, uh, I've learned a lot from, from his tutorials. Um, his tutorials are in C++, but they're in Open Frameworks rather than um, Juice. So uh, go check them out. Uh, so, uh, so he recommended this book to me, which was um, Designing Audio Effect Plugins in C++ by an author named Will will uh will perkle and uh this this book is an excellent excellent book uh it's it's written in a different it's written in his own api which is called rack afx but the concepts and the stuff is very adaptable and just with a little bit of thinking and a little bit of just kind of investigation uh, it it's really adaptable to the stuff that we do in juice and um, and the book is and the book is excellent, and he really um, breaks things down in a um, in a great way. So uh, so he's got a tutorial on a gain slider, and he's given us this equation here, which is an engineering equation. Okay, sometimes some of the confusion is the uh, notation. Sometimes the notation is written differently depending on what source you kind of get your equation for but this is the essence of the equation that we're looking for okay so we have decibels equals 20 times log uh which would be log base 10 of x okay so 
if you look at so so we so we look at this equation and we say okay hmm, how do I how do I break this down okay well the if we look at any DAW and look at a look at any volume slider or gain slider that we see on like a channel or on a plug-in normally it's written in decibel scale uh, decibel sound pressure level scale and what that means is that the loudest volume that you can have is uh, zero okay zero db sound pressure level okay this is a bit of a confusion thing um, and decibels uh, just as the discussion is quite a confusing is, is quite a confusing subject that I really don't want to get too far into the weeds with but uh, for sound for what we're doing here zero db is the loudest that we can have our sound okay so if we if so if we create a slider where the maximum sound is zero and then the minimum let's put the minimum at let's say uh negative 48 um then what we do is we have the answer we have the answer to this uh to this number right here the decibels so what we need to do is we need to create a number that we're going to multiply our input values by and that is going to give us this logarithmic kind of perceptually linear um, gain that's going to happen in our slider, making our slider more natural. Okay, so I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how I've kind of come up with a rationale for what I'm going to put in the code. Okay, so... Um, this decibel so if if i go here to gain slider dot set range okay we were discussing the range that we're going to make our our um our gain slider now so the minimum let's just make it negative 48 okay and then the maximum is zero decibels sound pressure level okay so that's what you see on any sort of channel slider or gain slider um that you see in any daw we'll set the value at um, let's say the, the initial value, let's just say, uh, negative 0 0.2, um, uh, no negative, let's just say negative one for now. Okay. So, so we have this number here. Okay. But what we need to do is we need to come up with the number that we need to multiply our, um, our input values by okay these numbers that we're getting in uh, from from our sound so what we need to do what we need to do is solve for x like we would any equation okay I'm not going to try to make this a mathematics uh, type of thing but I know that I need to kind of explain this you know for for you guys to get get where I'm going okay so what we could do in like any equation we can just take this solve for x First thing we need to do is divide both sides by 20. Okay, so so if I take this, and I divide both sides by 20, I should get decibels divided by 20 equals the log x. Okay, so now we have this. Okay, so if we have this, if you don't know what a logarithm is, I suggest um, you check out a tutorial. I can link you to a really good tutorial for that. Uh, below and I'll do that in the description okay because you must know what a logarithm is in order to be able to work with sound okay so to to get rid of this log okay log is understood if we don't have any number here beside it um, it's meant to be base 10 so this is log base 10 um, of x okay so to reverse so to reverse this logarithm base 10 so it'd be saying 10 to the power of something we need to take the 10 and we need to put it on the left hand side okay so what you end up with is 10 I'm going to write this because I don't have the I can't seem to find my arrow key for the formal mathematical notation but I'll just write it out in words 10 to the power of decibel or decibels divided by 20 okay equals x okay and if you're not if if you're not sure how i got that i will link you to a tutorial below and um she's really good and she does a great job of explaining logarithms and how how you can kind of switch them around and solve for them okay but this so now we have x on its own 
okay? And X is what we have. This X is this, processor.raw volume, okay? That's the number that we're multiplying times our values that are coming in for our sound. Okay, so we need to change this now. So we have, so now we can just take this and we can start, we can just start um, filling in the blanks of what we know. So we have decibel divided by 20. Great. Okay, that's pretty easy. Okay, so we got 10 to the power of, okay. So you have your, you have your math library for C++ that's already in juice. So what we could use is the pal function, pal function, okay? And then what you have is your base. So our base is 10. And then what are we what are we putting what power are we putting it to? Gain slider dot get value divided by 20. Okay? And as we as we showed you earlier, the uh, the range that we have for this gain slider dot get value is minus 48 to 0 dB SPL. Okay. So I think that's I think that's all we need to do. Okay, I've set an initial value. Okay. Uh, let's just let's just build this, see if it works. So I've tried to explain this the best way that I can. Um, I hope uh, I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, because it's hard for me not to delve any more into this without um, getting uh, getting deeper into the math and we can get quite easily tangled in the weeds with this. Okay, trying to explain the code, trying to explain the math, um, trying to explain the, <laughs> the theory. You know, it's a lot to explain. So, um, you know, and, and like I said before, this is something, this here is something that I struggle with myself and that I'm trying to get better at. But, um, you know, hopefully with experience, we can, uh, we can just grow with this. Okay, so I'm just going to add an audio track here. Do the same thing that I did before, which is just add our game, our game plugin. And then uh, I'm just going to pick a loop here. Okay, that's cool. Just move the tempo down a little bit. Okay, so once I click play, we should be able to hear it. Okay. And then. Okay, so um, I hope you guys can hear this. I, th I, I think I put it, I think I routed it right. Um, but uh, what you're hearing now is you're hearing a linear change in volume. Okay. So as I move it up and down the, as I move the slider up and down, you're hearing what we perceive to be a, uh, a linear change in volume, even though it's not actually linear, it's logarithmic, okay? We've created an illusion that has uh, allowed us to create a slider that is useful for us across all ranges, okay? Okay, there's, there's actually another way that you can do this in the code as well that I should touch on. It's a little bit hacky, um, but we did it, uh, we, we did it in uh, one of our past tutorials. Um, which is, um, I think it's called set skew at midpoint. So it's in the slider class. Okay, let me find the slider class. Okay, so set, set skew factor from midpoint. So that, so that pretty much does the same sort of thing, even though it would be a little bit uh, it'd be a little bit kind of hacky the way that, um, the, the way that we would do it, um, where what you would do is you would set where you want the value that you want your midpoint to be. So we could, so if we went back and we set it at like, let's say minus 22, um, we could essentially get the same sort of performance out of this slider if we use that function instead. Um, but like I said, it's a little bit, 
it's a little bit hacky. I mean, it's not, I mean, and you, like I said, you get pretty much the same sort of performance. You just want to get in, make sure you get an accurate number there. So, uh, so that's, that's, um, that's all we're going to do for this tutorial. So I hope, uh, I hope that it was helpful for you. Um, I've been actually getting a lot of good comments uh, about different ways that we can optimize um, this slider and um, some different requests as well. Um, there's uh, there's a guy I think his name's Burnt Bagels. Uh, he's one of the subscribers who put up some nice code for um, a way to. Uh, so so some some of uh, some subscribers have said that they've been getting a. Um, artifacts when they try to switch the values really quickly as you can as you can see when I try to switch the values really quickly I don't get any sort of artifacting or anything um, but some people have that I think it might be the sound their sound card or computer or some, something I think sound card um, so uh, so there's a way that you can actually um, apply like kind of a volume ramp so that when I move from this value to this value very quickly it applies kind of a ramp that will not go to that value immediately but will just kind of increment it um, a little bit slower so you don't get that artifacting uh, and that's something that we could look at for next tutorial but uh, if you can't wait there's a guy that commented on my last video his name I think his name is Burnt Bagels um, he posted up some code uh, which he got from the I think you got it from the Juice website, and um, and it's good, and um, you know we can go through that for the next tutorial and uh, along with an explanation for it. Okay, so I hope that was help helpful for you. Uh, any questions or comments, just leave them below, and I will see you next time.